Hey everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name's Jack. Today is another LEGO Week in Review. There was a bunch of stuff that happened today. I'm not really sure what the biggest story of the week is, but before I get into the new Star Wars Rogue One catalog teaser stuff, I want to talk about the new revisions that happened for LEGO Ideas. And if you don't know what LEGO Ideas is, it's a website in which you submit your LEGO creations in hopes of having it become an official set. Now, I'm going to outline some of the more important revisions pretty quick. A lot of these new revisions are actually restrictions, and this is so that A, the LEGO Ideas group can spend their time reviewing projects that would even qualify to become a real LEGO set, and this will of course also help guide builders who are aspiring to submit their LEGO Ideas set. So here are the new restrictions. You can't have a set with iconic elements from something that would be inappropriate for the LEGO brand. No large or human scale weapons or weapon replicas of any kind. Sorry Zatsi Nambis, your builds are awesome, but unfortunately they're never going to become LEGO Ideas sets. You cannot propose anything for LEGO Dimensions expansions packs. So your sets can't display logos of anything from a third party. Also, if your project does focus on a third party, for example, like making a Lamborghini set, you cannot mix it with other third party property, like having a joint Lamborghini and Porsche set together. Here's a big one, projects must fit in a single box, so nothing over 3000 pieces. And also here is probably one of the biggest restrictions and definitely something you need to pay attention to if you wanna make a Lego idea set. Once Lego produces an idea set based on a third party property, they will not accept more Lego idea submissions based on that property. This means once the Lego ideas Ecto-1 was accepted, all later Ghostbusters projects came out in the Ghostbusters theme. So if you wanna make a Lego idea set, knock everything off the list that has already been accepted by Lego ideas. There were a few other guidelines that were outlined as well. And if you're serious about submitting any projects, I suggest you check those out too. I will leave a link in the video description below. All right, we got all that stuff out of the way. Now let's move on to the Rogue One catalog teaser. We really don't learn a whole lot more. This came from Promo Bricks, and we basically just get a better look at what the box artwork and style is going to be for these sets. The main feature is a very cool looking Death Trooper. I have a feeling they're probably going to be in several of these sets. And there's also some basic looking TIE Fighters as well as that older AT-AT. And if you also look at the bottom, those are the relative sizes of the five new Star Wars Rogue One sets to come out. And it's possible we might figure out what those sets might be at the San Diego Comic-Con later in July. Speaking of San Diego Comic-Con, Sir Gareth from Eurobricks has some interesting information about what the possible exclusive figs are going to be for this year. Technically, this is still just a rumor, but it's believed that we're going to get a Captain America Hydra Agent version. And for DC, we're going to get another TV character from the Arrow Show, and this time it's the Atom. Also, a member of the LEGO Inside Tour group for 2016 made a video about their trip and showed off the special exclusive set that came to those members. This set is of a big yellow truck that toured around Europe in the mid-90s and early 2000s. It's a pretty cool set, very very exclusive. It was only given out to the members on this tour. All right, what's going on in the world of Lego movies? There's actually a lot of stuff, some good news and some not so good news. The Lego 2 movie release date has been pushed back to 2019. It was originally set to be released on May 26, 2017, and is now scheduled for February 2nd, 2019. That is about a year and a half longer to wait for the Lego movie, which uh, I for one am definitely not happy about. And as of right now, Warner Bros. hasn't given any reason for why this happened. If it's any consolation, the Batman movie does come out in about six months from now. And not just the Batman movie is coming out, but we also have the Ninjago movie set to release September 22nd, 2017. And I just saw an article from thebrickfan.com where we now know who the voice actors are going to be for the main characters. Jackie Chan plays Master Wu. Dave Franco is Lloyd, and there's also a bunch of other cool actors playing the rest of the main characters, and if you want to see the full list, I will leave a link in the video description below. Sorry, I have a feeling this week's episode is going to be jumping around a lot, but before I forget, I want to talk about the August calendar for the LEGO store. As usual, there's a ton of little promotions. I'm not going to say every single little thing, but we now know how to get that Creator Mini London bus set, and you can get it between August 1st and 15th with a purchase of $75 or more. VIP's early access to the Direct to Consumer set starts at the 17th and goes to the 31st, and rumor has it it is the Cinderella Castle set. And also the LEGO Creator Volkswagen Beetle set will be available on August 1st. If you want to learn more about all the promotions LEGO is offering, I will leave this link in the video description as well. Here are the official images for the set Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum. 
It is set number 76060. It will have 358 pieces and sell for around $30. I'm really liking the look of this interior build here, as well as the design for this portal beast. I'm looking forward to this one. It's got three nice minifigs, and it seems to be pretty evenly priced. Here's another reveal of the week. This comes from thebrickset.com, and this is the Nexo Knights Royal Guard set, 5004390. This promotional minifigure should be given away between the months of July and September, and it's very interesting that this comes in a box, and not just a poly bag. Also, Disney has announced that there will be some Lego shorts based on Frozen that will be coming out around November. It will focus on the story of the Frozen Northern Lights and will feature the original voice cast from the movie. Here's, I guess, just a little bit of a teaser announcement. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has been set with a release date that is May 5th of 2017, and Marvel just announced their merchandising program for this movie, which doesn't come as any surprise, I don't think. But now it is official, we will be getting Guardians of the Galaxy sets from this new movie. Also, there's been some buzz about a new book of mini models. This is Tiny Lego Wonders by Mattia Zamboni. It's not out yet, but is available for pre-order at a discount right now. And according to the reviews coming out for this book so far, it seems to be a great guide for those that like to do mini building. I've left a link below if you want to buy the book, as well as links for everything that I'm talking about in this episode. All right, I think that is it for the Lego news stories this week. Let's check out a cool custom creations before we go. All of Sion is at it again with another giant city diorama. This one is based on the new Volcano Explorer sets. I believe all the new sets have been included in this diorama. We have a wonderful build for a volcano. And once again, this builder has absolutely blown me away of how they do clouds and smoke. The last time I showed a build off from this flicker feed, we had a great build for a rocket taking off. And here you can definitely see the similar building technique with the smoke. Shows a lot of dimension from something that could seemingly be built very simply. But for me, it really brings these builds to life. This is one of several builds by Tim Schwalfenberg that depicts ships from the game Homeworld. This one here is the Vager Carrier. I hope I'm saying Vager right. And this is just a wonderful build for a spaceship. There's a lot of great detail going along the top panel of this ship, and I really like the use of this exposed bit of Technic. If a build is not explicitly Technic, it's usually a common strategy of the builder to keep their Technic pieces as well hidden as possible. Usually they'll make up the internals for structural stability, but it's great to see how this exposed Technic really works to improve the the overall look of the ship. I highly recommend you check out the rest of his flicker feed. This is only one of several impressive ship builds along the same lines. Here we have a build called Don't Burn the Kitchen by Jarek Wally. And here we have a scene of a chef that looks to be a bit in over his head. We have a wonderful build for a kitchen. I particularly like the spice rack or the shelves in the back, as well as the refrigerator with the glass door. But the whole thing really comes together with what looks like this sort of snapshot moment of what might be a grease fire getting out of hand. Heck, you can even guess what he was cooking based on the food scattered around the kitchen. This here is a Star Wars build. We have Outrider by the Solitary Dark. In the description, our builder claims to be a big fan of the Shadows of the Empire story, and it has everything you can get about Shadows of the Empire except for the N64 game. I feel I'm just the opposite, absolutely loving the N64 game, but know nearly nothing about the comic books or anything else. Anyways, this is a great build for Dash Rendar's ship. You can certainly see its similarities to the Falcon, and I'm not even going to check the lore. You can pretty much guarantee this is also a Karelian built ship. Many have done the Outrider in LEGO before, but what I like so much about this build is that it's done in a very clean and detailed fashion and it's kind of how I would imagine this ship to come out if it was a Lego set. There's perhaps a bit of extra detailing especially on the side panels there that put it maybe a little bit above that but it just looks really nice and it just looks like this would be easy enough for younger builders to wrap their heads around. Here's an incredible set. This is the Ultimate Collector Series Planet Express ship. You might be able to recognize this as the main ship from the show Futurama. And I love how the builder put Ultimate Collector Series on here and even included a little plaque with a stand, just like we get with the Star Wars sets. This was already rejected by LEGO Ideas due to the show not quite fitting what the LEGO brand promotes. But nonetheless, this is an incredible build and definitely deserves to be celebrated. All these nice panel pieces fit together very smoothly and the arc of this very classic looking rocket ship is captured well. Also, the new rules and regulations for sets just came out and this is over 3000 pieces. So regardless, this set wasn't gonna get accepted. It's an awesome build and I would love to see this LEGO ship at a convention someday. All right, that is it for this LEGO Weekly News Update. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe or hit that like button, and we will see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!